members here as part of the team um, that I wanted to uh, uh, introduce. So my name is Amber Aquino, County of San, Diego, San Diego Parks Department, Park Project Manager for this OHV Feasibility Study Project. Emily Hears, uh, Hubbard is the Chief of Development who's also present. And we also have Dirk Rowe with ICF here um, that will be assisting us. And then we also have Joan Isaac with Kearns and West who will be um, hosting this presentation as well. And I'll, I'll pass it over to, to Joan. Thanks, Emmett. I'm going to provide some information to you about the meeting so you know what to expect. You have kind of a roadmap for the next 60 minutes. Some housekeeping items. You heard Emmett say OHV, which uh, is um, short for Off-Highway Vehicle. And um, so I just want to let everyone know what that acronym is. As you've heard, we are recording this meeting. And I want to let you know, too, that there is a substantial amount of time reserved in the meeting for Q&A. We are going to use the Zoom Q&A function, and you can find the, the function at the bottom of your screen, and it's the two little con, uh, conversation bubbles that say Q&A below them. So you can click on that at any time in the meeting and submit a question. Uh, and so we'll take a look at the questions when we get um, to that portion of the meeting. But I just want to let you know it's there. And we'll go over the instructions again, too, on, on where to find it before we go into the Q&A session. On the next slide, we have the agenda. The purpose of this meeting, and this is the second meeting that's being conducted as part of the Op Highway Vehicle Park Feasibility Study. So for this second meeting, the team is focusing on sharing results with you, sharing results with you from a survey that was conducted, as well as results from discussions with the stakeholder roundtable process, and then um, also sharing results about the technical work that's been done, including the tier one site selection process, and then looking ahead at the tier two analysis. And then again, we have lots of, lots of time reserved for, for q and I'll mention too, before we go to the next slide, that we, um, we're going to take that time to hear your questions. And I want to let you know that the team is very e eager to hear your feedback and your comments. And the way to do that is after the meeting, you can email your comments to Emmett and we'll provide that email address. And we're also going to point you into the direction of the website for the project. So you can go to the website, take a closer, closer look, and then submit comments to, to Emmett. And we'll go over that again um, later on in the meeting. Okay, thanks for pausing there. And we'll go to the next slide. We're going to start off with a couple of poll questions using the Zoom function so you can just stay on this platform. Uh, these questions are geared so that we can just continue to make these meetings more accessible and productive for you. So um, let's go to the first poll question, which is, how did you hear about the public meeting? And so there's lots of choices there. You can just select the one um, that best uh, tells us how you heard about the meeting. So it was from the website. Did you get an email from the county? Maybe you heard about it from a community organization or you saw it on social media or maybe a friend. And just I will pause a moment so everyone gets a chance to answer the question. This helps us to better hone in how we get information out to the public. All right, let's see the results for this question. This is great. So what we're seeing is that um, most of you, uh, at least 40% of you saw the information about the meeting on social media. This is really helpful for the county staff. And um, and then it looks like uh, the email that the county sent, sent out was effective, as well as word of mouth, hearing about it from a friend or your a community organization that you're affiliated with. We have one more question for you, which is, we're curious to know why you decided to attend today's meeting. You see answers there. Maybe um, you're attending because you hope to use a future OHV park in San Diego County. Maybe you have a business related to OHV recreation. 
perhaps you're interested in just generally in park and open space planning in San Diego County. Uh, maybe the primary reason is that you're interested in generally in planning and land use for the county, or maybe there's another reason. Again, I'll pause so that everyone can select a choice. And we'll go to the results. And this is interesting. So many of our participants in today's meeting are here because you hope to, um, to, to use a future OHB park that can be cited here in San Diego County. Thanks everyone who participated. I can see from the numbers, we had a lot of people participate in the poll, so thanks for doing that. We're now gonna jump into providing the updates and reporting back to you on the progress that the team has made. And Emmett's gonna start us out with that. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you again for attending and taking those poll questions. Very helpful for us, so appreciate that. A, a little background with this project for those who don't know. Uh, but back in February, 2021, uh, we received board direction uh, to submit an application uh, to the state to apply for grant funding, just to help us investigate uh, the feasibility of establishing an OHV park in the County of San Diego. And um, as you can see here, as uh, the letter reads in, in the board uh, letter, and I can read that verbatim, is to conduct activities necessary to begin the process of siting an off-highway motor vehicle park in the County of San Diego including conducting any necessary review under CEQA once a site is identified and returned to the board as necessary. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what is an OHV park? Um, OHV parks are managed in order to provide amenities such as trails, tracks, other OHV recreation opportunities, but at the same time to not just uh, the off-road vehicle activities, but it's also to protect the natural and cultural resources we have. So just wanted to put an emphasis on that. And again, we have some features here that's listed in dot points here, where it's not just trails and um, active amenities. We also can have uh, things that are more family friendly and accommodations such as restrooms, camping, uh, picnic areas. Um, a priority would be uh, obviously um, access and public safety, uh, including law enforcement, uh, availability of first aid and opportunities for search and rescue as needed. Um, these type of sites also provide interpretive and educational opportunities. And again, another important um, aspect is the resource management, land management, which is what our department does as well, and finding that, that balance. Next slide, please. This is a, a schedule of the steps of where we're in the process. And just to inform you where we are, um, we'll be uh, providing um, some information on the tier one assessment and more details of new information on the tier two but letting you, uh, the, the group here, know that as far as our schedule looks, we're looking at um, completing the, this feasibility study targeting some time in, in fall, uh, potentially fall or winter 2025, but that's kind of what we're projecting at right now based on the, the current status for where we are. Um, next slide, please. Survey results. Okay, so I know in our last meeting last year, we published a survey, we had a, uh, uh, a good amount of participation and appreciate everyone who particip participated and provided feedback in the, the survey. So we had over 400 responses, which was great. Uh, responses comprised of uh, user demographic information, vehicle riding styles, um, facility location recommendations, some programming references. Um, and we also talked about some environmental concerns, environmental impacts, and, and uh, it was a really good survey and we're happy that people were able to participate. The next slides will show some of the questions from the survey. And I just wanted to disclose as well that all the questions and responses are available online. So we did publish that online, but for the purposes of this presentation, I decided just to pull just a, a handful of questions for, uh, for me to share with this group. Next slide, please. Uh, here you can see one of the questions we had is, do you ride or do you own any of the following OHV vehicles? Uh, the highest percentage here uh, who taken the survey was uh, ownership or riding of, of four by fours. Um, we also have uh, the next, uh, which would be uh, motorbikes at 32%. Um, 
But out of the entire percentage of the people who've taken the survey, you can see here that there was about 30% who didn't ride or own a vehicle. But just wanted to share that number because that is a uh, pretty consistent uh, throughout the survey as, as far as uh, the, the people who've taken the, um, the, the this survey and participated. Uh, as far as other, you can see on the right side, there are some other um, options and other off-road activity uh, vehicles uh, that was um, included. Next slide, please. Um, well, like I said earlier, um, you can see here that never rode and or participated in these activities is roughly 30%, which was consistent. Then uh, you would have the uh, roughly, you know, 60% in which we did have participation. So it's just nice to see that consistency throughout the survey. Next slide, please. We listed another question about what type of features you'd like to see. Um, I know that this is a more in a programming level, but again, it's a question just to get a, a feeler uh, to see what our San Diego County residents would li like to see if and when we do um, site a, a location. But here uh, you can see that we had as a percentage, uh, the higher percentage was uh, desert hard packed areas. And following that would be uh, four by four tracks and some obstacle areas. Next slide, please. Here we also included major concern question, and the, the, the highest percentage for major concerns uh, was related to impacts to biological resources. Uh, following that uh, came traffic impacts. And then we also had an other option in which we had a, a lot of feedback. And uh, this is the type of information we're looking for. Just wanted to share this with you. With, who's here and visiting. Uh, this information helps us uh, as far as gathering information during this feasibility study process. So uh, this survey was, was very helpful and uh, we look forward to additional comments, you know, in, in which if there's any concerns or comments for this project, we're open. This is a transparent process. And again, we're, we are going through this feasibility uh, study process at this time and I appreciate everyone's participation. Uh, we'll go on to the, the last question I wanted to share here which kind of um, transitions me to what I just said, uh, which is sharing comments and suggestions. There's a whole list of comments and feedback that we received and, and we look at all of them and all these comments are important to us. This is the time to solicitate and obtain information. Um, this being a feasibility study, this is what we're doing. And this is uh, what we have to do in this process. So I, I Love to read all of these, but we can't stay here all night. But all this information is readily available um, uh, on our website uh, for your review. And again, if you have any questions regarding this survey, I'm available. My contact information will, will be here. But uh, we can go on to, well, let me read up some just quickly. You know, some comments that we received that were open were to provide more OHV parks, encourage younger generations <clears throat> from illegal driving and, and riding, uh, thoughtful design to minimize environmental uh, damage and impacts, uh, try to have something closer in proximity, uh, closer to urban areas, and be considerate of noise impacts and destruction habitat. Again, <clears throat> important information that we're trying to obtain now and, and continue to obtain at this point based on what we're doing. So this was very helpful. Next slide, please. Roundtable feedback. So we do have a roundtable, which is representative by, by various groups of professionals. Um, to, to name them off, we have parks advisory committee um, members, along with representation from the San Diego Off-Road Coalition, uh, California Off-Road Association, the San Pasquale Economic Development Corporation, Sierra Club, Backland, uh, Backcountry Land Trust, State Parks, and Fire Department. Uh, fire Protection District and the Sheriff's Department. Next slide, please. We've had two meetings so far with a round table meeting in which they provided us a, a lot of really good feedback. Some of the uh, key themes we wanted to share with you is we talked about safety, fire access, and response times. We also talked about you know options of OHV sites which can help reduce potential wildfires and support fighting wildfires. Considering OHV locations, to recreate for just a day after work or afternoon. Again, locating these to more higher density urban areas to have your day recreation opportunities. Um, create uh, other amenities such as restrooms and um, playgrounds and make it more family oriented. 
consider multiple types of OHV uses as well. Um, we also talked about avoiding cultural sensitive and tribal sites, environmental protection and watershed placement. So, so many of these key themes are at a program level. So again, very useful information that we take and, and we note, uh, but for the purpose of this feasibility study, just to remind everyone, um, we, we are uh, putting our efforts to site and, and, and locate in which we're programming typically happens later uh, during the um, site identification and development process. But again, we are open to take in as much information as you can for us to be successful and for the for you all to be successful too in um, coming to uh, locating a park that would be feasible and, and works for all. We can move on to the next slide, please. Tier one site selection. This is a little more technical and I'd like to hand this off to, uh, to Dick with ICF. He'll be able to discuss with you some of the, the processes we went through in um, the tier site one selection process. Sure, thanks Emmett. Yeah, as noted briefly earlier, we have defined a three-tier planning process for this study, which is aimed at, at first, broadly identifying sites with potential and then narrowing the selection based on more detailed review as we move along. And the tier one analysis starts by examining the entire county in terms of scale. So we looked at everything, and that is, of course, a huge area with a a lot of complexity to look through. So our first step was to create a GIS model to help us do the heavy lifting on that analysis. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, there's a lot of map, da map data available for the county. And we compiled every data layer, which is uh, 37 layers total that we identified that could help inform the process. And those layers include things like land use and development data, administrative and ownership data and environmental data, such as reserved lands, critical habitats, uh, vegetation, watersheds, wetlands, all of those kinds of things. Next slide. So our next step then was to assign scores to the features within each of those 37 data layers. And a feature that is more compatible with OHV was OHV use was given a positive score of up to five points, whereas a feature that tends to be less compatible with OHV use was given a negative score up to negative five. An example would be, say, from a vegetative cover perspective, an area mapped as developed or disturbed cover would receive a positive score, and areas mapped as native habitats would receive negative scores to indicate their, uh, their less compatibility um, and operating as a constraint. Uh, other, um, one other important, really important note is that we considered certain types of criteria were considered not to just be a, a limiting constraint, but to be completely unacceptable for consideration in the study. And, those areas were assigned a value of negative 1,000 so that we can easily identify and eliminate them from consideration. And examples of those kinds of things include conserved lands, preserves, mitigation areas, and tribal lands, uh, as well as some other things. So once all the weighting factors were assigned, we converted each layer to a, a grid, which acts like a pixels in a photograph, and used our software to overlay a line and overlay each of those 37 layers on top of each other. And we add the values uh, from each layer to create a composite grid where each cell or pixel in that grid contains the, the mathematical sum uh, for its position in each of those 37 layers. Uh, so each pixel gets a total score. And step three, three then was to do an initial screening to identify areas with the highest composite score. Next slide. So what we did was to query our composite map and we're looking for areas with initially with a total score of at least 10 points in the positive 
and a total contiguous size of 500 acres. So at least 500 acres of pixels that have a score of, of 10 or greater. And when we did that, most of the sites that we got in the result were in the East County Desert. And those sites are generally pretty far from most OHV users and pretty close to existing OHV sites. And so because one of the key goals of the study is to find areas that are, are closer to OHV users and accommodate kind of uh, quick trips, um, we reevaluated the model to look for areas with a score of at least five points aggregate and a size of at least 300 acres. Next slide. So the computer model results uh, from that exercise, along with public input from roundtables, our first public meetings and questionnaires uh, led to the identification of 21 initial potential sites. And those areas are contained within the pink areas on this map. I wanna know it's really important here to understand this map that the, the pink areas represent broad areas in which the 2021 20, highest scoring sites were found. They're not the actual limits of any single single site because they're obviously much, much bigger than uh, uh, 300 acres. So those 20 site, 21 sites then were evaluated further by the project team and county staff to further narrow the, the list of tier one sites to a final list of, of eight. Next slide. And that transitions, transitions us into <clears throat> the tier two planning process. Next. So those eight sites enter this tier two analysis um, and they'll proceed through the tier two analysis process to narrow them down further. And whereas tier the tier one process was based primarily on that large scale computer modeling exercise uh, with some you know with some human training and, and review, tier two will be based solely on that uh, review by human experts to closely look at each site, check for things that the model may not have caught, and have a deeper understanding of what's important about each one of those sites, either in the, the positive or, or the negative. Um, so that includes looking at things like looking at the viability of acquiring the land, uh, technical review by biologists and cultural resource experts, uh, border patrol considerations, land use adjacency issues, and, uh, and other things. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Emmett. Excellent, thank you, Dick, appreciate that. Um, now, uh, we're here in, in the draft tier two site assessment um, process in, in, the, um, in the project. And just wanted to share with the group that like what Dick mentioned, you know, from 21 sites, um, you know, we had to narrow it down to a, a smaller batch or a narrow manageable number of sites. So right now with this, this is all um, considered draft at this point. Um, but again, with feedback we received from the roundtable group, um, with some known challenges in certain sites, uh, working with our uh, custom and border uh, patrol um, agencies, Homeland Security, uh, proximity to OHVs, um, we we came up with this draft um, number, if you will, and, and draft sites. So uh, bef before we can do the more detailed assessment, you know, we have to finalize these. So we did send out willing selling letters. Uh, to these draft sites, and um, this is going to be the first time we're, we're we're sharing this. And again, wanted to see, and you know, if you were interested to provide additional feedback on these sites. Again, they're draft, and we may be missing a location, or a location doesn't work. Uh, this being a feasibility study process, this is the information we're trying to um, obtain, and and uh, uh, from, from you all. So uh, again, um, us just trying to take um, all this information all the potential sites and reducing it down in, in a mindful way, at the same time uh, obtaining uh, critical feedback from, from the public and professionals to assist us in this in this process and potentially citing 
you know, which V uh, facility. Uh, with that, we can move on to the next slide. And this talks about the, the criteria for the tier two. Now, um, before we, we dive deep into and finalize the tier, the tier two, it's about identifying these areas. And, uh, and that's where we are. Um, we are. The reason why we called it draft is because again, we're open to receive additional information from you all to assist us with this process. And again, we haven't finalized this tier two number. I know we called out the number eight, that's what we've um, identified and send out willing selling letters to, uh, but you know that that could be reduced further. Could be six or five, or and you know um, we we don't know until we complete that process and obtain additional information from, from you all to assist us here. Um, we can move on to the next slide, please. And uh, this is my contact information. I know that there was some new information here that was shared. Uh, this presentation will be available on the website a few days after uh, this today, this meeting. But we have a lot of information on our website as well. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to share some key things before we transition into the questions and answers is that, you know, just as a, a, a reminder, we're, we're trying our best here to keep this a trans, uh, transparent process. Um, we want to make sure we're able to solicitate and obtain all the information we can. Uh, this is the time to do so. So we appreciate all the comments, support, concerns, recommendations. Uh, th this is the time to do it. And we're, we're happy with how much feedback we received already. And we just encourage more, uh, if we can, to help us do our job and do our job better. And uh, again, just want to work with you all as we continue with this, with this process. Um, and with that said, uh, we could proceed to, uh, to the next slide. Yeah, and maybe we could just keep it here just for a oh, moment. Sure. I want to, if anybody um, wants to snap a photo of this slide, so that way you'll have um, its email address as well as the link. Um, I know that link's kind of long, and I have found that if I Google County of San Diego off-highway vehicle, it, that, that site pops up pretty fast. Um. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the Q&A portion of the meeting. And we have about 30 minutes for this portion, uh, which is great. And I know that I can see that uh, the questions have already been submitted. So thank you for those who have submitted questions to get us going. A reminder, the way to participate in the Q&A is to submit your question using the Q&A function on Zoom. It looks like that icon is the two little conversation bubbles with Q&A underneath it. And on my screen, it's um, at the bottom of my screen on the left-hand side. To help us with the Q&A, we have Jessica Geisler from the County of San Diego, who's, uh, who's going to be pulling questions from the Q&A box and then helping the team with that. Jessica, I'm going to turn it over to you and the team. All right, sounds great. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jessica Geisler. I work in the marketing department for County Parks and Recreation, and I'm happy to be hosting the Q&A section of tonight's meeting. Um, I'm going through the question and answer pane right now um, to see what questions are coming through, um, and I will work my best to get through everything. Um, anything I don't get through, through, we will make sure to capture and provide an answer to. Um, and as they mentioned earlier, we will make sure that everything is posted to our website, sdparks.org. Um, I know the website that we shared previously was a long one. So if you do go to sdparks.org and just type in OHV, we do have um, our search engine optimization set up appropriately. So you should be able to locate our files pretty quickly, or you can email Emmett and he'll make sure to connect you to the proper files. Um, but I also just wanted to kind of step back to the very beginning and just let you know that um, the whole reason this this um, project is even coming up is because we we understand that San Diego County has a really high um, concentration of OHVs. And according to registration data, uh, the number of OHV vehicles is growing every year. Um, and so we see that high demand combined with, you know, a limited number of legal OHV uh, facilities has led to an increase of unauthorized OHV use in our open space areas. So as a park agency, you know, the County of San Diego Department of Parks and Recreation is working to, you know, enhance opportunities in parks and, and to explore new amenities and park designs that can accommodate 
all kinds of diverse types of recreation with the goal of providing residents with safe and accessible places to play. And that would include opportunities for OHV users. Uh, and these efforts are balanced by efforts to um, preserve our land and our local habitats, things that are uniquely San Diego. And we, we recognize also that we're in one of the most biodiverse regions in the world. So, you know, in an effort to, to try to combat some of that unauthorized use in some of our more sensitive areas, while also granting OHV access in more central areas um, than are currently being offered in San Diego County or, or um, in our the borders of of the county, then um, we're trying to embark on this exploratory feasibility study. So looking at those layers of the map, hopefully that explained more about how we were pulling our data. Uh, it did look as though preserved lands and, and um, tribal lands were being considered. Those were actually being ruled out, but we wanted to look at what private lands existed in those areas that could be accumulated together to compile enough acreage that would make sense for an OHV park, would, which would measure anywhere from you know 300 to 500 acres. And based on the size of that park, the types of amenities and features at that park would change. So um, I just wanted to make sure that that information was shared kind of up front. Uh, and again, that this is an exploratory study. If we can't find any feasible locations where we can find enough private properties together to make a park, um, that we're going to have to go back to the drawing board, potentially look at you know state parks, look at other um, park agencies and see what other options we have available to us. Again, understanding that OHV use is on the rise. And so is, you know, unauthorized access in, in our public lands, and we definitely want to work to preserve those. So enough of me talking, let me um, <laughs> go to some of the first questions we had here. The one, the first one that came through, um, the, we have um, one from John Elliott. He's from our Descanso Planning Group, and he referenced a specific site. Uh, one of the ones that came through um, looks like there was an area shown at the intersection of I-8 and Hapitul Road and Highway 79. And he's saying, depending on the type of OHV facility that could potentially be proposed, um, he's worried that nothing might work in that area unless it was a small pocket um, type motorcycle motorcycle track or campground. And so um, this is actually something um, that one of our operations team members would like to address. So I'd like to hand the virtual microphone over to Marco on our ops team. Yes, uh, Jessica, what question was that? Sorry. Um, we have here, you mentioned here, you would like to respond to a question about, um, there is, uh, John Elliott had a question about um, one of the locations being um, at the intersection of I-8 and Hapitul Road and the 79. And he's oh, worried I'm about the, look, the size of the facility and what it could potentially offer. Oh, I'm sorry if I accidentally hit a button or something. I. Wasn't okay. aware. Yeah, <laughs> I was I wondering apologize. about that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna hand this one. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, Marco's actually on our operations team, so he oversees like boots on the ground, you know, park rangers on a daily basis. This is actually a great question for Emmett, who is our park project manager. So I'm gonna hand this over to him. Yeah, sure. The, the, this is great, great feedback, and this is the type of feedback we're trying to obtain. I know that um just to piggyback on what Jessica said earlier, you know, efforts in trying to find a, a 300 acre site is, is going to be a challenge in the county of San Diego. Um, the average of OHV parks in the state are roughly 500 acres and larger. So, I mean, us as a county, we have to realize that this availability of land may not be there. So we may have to pivot. And kind of what um, Mr. John Elliott said is, hey, there might be a smaller site available for the smaller site of, of, of focus activity. And those might be the only options we have. So that that's correct, um, that that could be a possibility. And again, this is the type of feedback where we're trying to get. So I appreciate that comment, John, and would love to continue to talk to you, you know, on the site after this meeting, if you'd like to discuss, discuss those type of opportunities. But that's the type of information we're trying to solicit and obtain to help us through this process where we're all successful. So thank you, John, for that. All right, and while I have you here, Emmett, we had some questions from David that came through from Sierra Club, um, identifying that there were, in fact, on that first map that we looked at it, it appeared that the conserved lands um, were, were listed on that map. Also, that there were some, um, there were at least five Native American sovereign reservations that overlapped with some potential OHV sites. So can you clarify again why those locations appear to be on that map? Um, and whether or not we've been in contact with the with those locations or if they've been ruled out from potential OHV sites. 
Yeah, uh, just, just to let you know, we are ruling out all native lands. So the bubble figure of what Dick described earlier was, was kind of a, a bubble, if you will, just giving us an idea. Um, this being a feasibility study where, um, you know, that, that's what we're doing, finding areas that may have scored high in our model. But at that model level, uh, us being limited to having that human perspective, human review, boots on the ground, further assessment. I mean, those are things that are going to happen a little later in the process if there's opportunity for land to be assessed. <clears throat> but at this point, we're just trying to assess and gather the, the opportunities and, and and the possibilities. So this is a feasibility level. And, and, you're, and you're right. That's a great question. I see that blob of purple. That's the figure that we put together. <laughs> and I'm telling myself, wow, that's a, that's covering a lot of... Um, of acreage there, but I, I could reassure to you that the scoring system that we described earlier, that Dick described, is um, is not considering tribal land, is not considering preserves, and that those are negative um, negative scores in which um, the higher scores that was presented here might be in proximity to that. So those are the opportunities we're looking at if it is neighboring, and you know, obtaining information from those property owners neighboring these areas. I mean, again, it may be feasible, it may not. So that, that, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. And and, um, and as you know, as we continue through this process, as we narrow the the grouping, you know, we'll continue to um, receive public feedback and comment. So appreciate that comment. Okay. And then to confirm, as as we do narrow down that list of properties, um, as as we look more seriously at potential locations, and if they were happen to to be close to preserve lands or or to Native American lands, um, it during those those conversations, we would be working directly with any any agency partners and in, in um, discussing all, all of the potential impacts. In addition to um, going through all of the environmental impacts and everything else, um, and discussing things with residents, um, everything would be part of the the usual um, transparent process that we go through. Yes. Yeah, Dan, no, thank you, Jessica, for adding that. Yes, uh, 100% agree. That That's our process. Us at the Parks Department, again, we we have a process in place when it comes to citing a location and going through the development process, acquisition process. We're not there. This is just a feasibility study where we're getting feedback from the public and trying to get a better understanding of demographics, of the, the OHV users here, of the environmental opportunities you know, here in the county. So uh, again, high level. Uh, trying to obtain all the information we can. So appreciate these type of comments and we expect more of these to come. Awesome. And then the map that we shared today that show those different layers, we're able to share that post meeting, correct? Where people can see kind of what those different things were that were yeah. being considered. Absolutely. So the new information that wasn't posted, um, the tier one was posted for everyone on our website as an update based on the um you know, uh, our first public meeting based on our uh, roundtable meeting survey. Then we um, have the tier two, which is new information, which will also be posted days after, um, you know, we, we conclude this meeting, um, which identified the draft tier two sites. Um, we're unable to share any detailed locations just for the, the privacy and safety of the property owners, as, um, you know, we did send out some willing selling letters just to solicitate more feedback. But but again, um, until sites are determined, uh, which will happen at a later time, that's when that information can be disclosed. So right now, we're just trying to gather information. And, uh, and yeah, this is the time, time to do it. So Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. All right, one of the questions that came through, and this is actually a, probably a great question for operations here. Um, this one came through from David. Uh, will the county include mountain biking and electric wheeled recreational vehicles as allowed users of a potential OHV park? Great question. Um, and I know that the size of the park, of course, will determine, you know, again, if, if a park was feasible, um, would determine the use cases. For that park. Um, so this would be partial a development question, but also partial operations. So um, I don't know, Emmett, do you want to take this one first and maybe hand um, this over to anybody on our operations team? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that comment is consistent with what we uh, received as far as responses in our survey. So it, it's a great comment. Also, I think it was mentioned also during our roundtable meetings to have this type of multi-use facility of what's envisioned. And again, great comments that we we consider and we'll, we'll note and 
and right now it's it's more so the the cart before the horse situation. We need to identify sites of of of, of potential. Then we can design accordingly once sites are identified. So this information is great from a programming level of opportunities what we can provide and then what's being asked for. But the first step is identifying a location. So that that's where we're going to put our efforts. But we'll continue to obtain information as far as interest for programming. And uh, uh, we, we like to invite all, all comments. But just to remind um, the people here, this is a feasibility study and citing the location is, is where we are in the phase. So um, program information, yes, we can take that in and note it, but uh, making those determinations will not happen until um, later down the road. So, and Absolutely. I don't know if ops would like to add to that. Sorry for cutting you off, Jessica. Yeah, no, I, I would love ops to, to actually chime in on on like the specifics of how we uh, manage safety when we have multi-use parks, right? When we have different types of trail users and and park users. Yeah, this is Andy. Uh, I can just add to that in regards to, you know, when it comes to you know um, just providing just the the balance, right? We we work every day, right, just to to balance the recreation opportunities, you know, um, and just maintaining right different a diverse system. Uh, inclusive park offering. So when that time comes, like Emmett mentioned, it, we can look into that. Um, obviously, safety is, is is key for us. That's number one. And, and not knowing right, if it all depends what what if we have um, an off road uh, park available. So it, it's very difficult to answer now. But yes, we will definitely look into that. Um, I mean, we just in our our you know our preserves now. Um, yes, we do uh, allow. Um, you know, mountain bikes and we, you know, and, and class one or class or class two uh, e-bikes. So, well, yeah, when that time comes, it's just very difficult to say right now. All right. And hey, Andy, since I've got you on the line here, we have a question about how parks and maybe park maintenance in general could help to reduce wildfire danger. Can you speak to that just from your experience as, as um, overseeing multiple parks, especially up in the mountain region? Yeah, so uh, vegetation management when it comes to fuels reduction is a high priority for us um, in our high fire severity zone. So we work closely with CAL FIRE. Um, we're constantly, um, you know, applying for grants, uh, which we currently, uh, we are uh, working with them currently um, to reduce, um, you know, uh, just fuel reductions and in, in, in vegetation management. That's something we do on a regular basis, not only with, with CAL FIRE, but within our own staff as well. Uh, and maintaining the fire breaks, uh, keeping, uh, you know, just the, the vegetation levels um, as low as we possibly can. Great, thank you so much. All right, let's see here. We have a request from um, Rose Sharon or Sharon Rose to please stay out of Lawson Valley noted that is in our comments um, section here. So thank you, all of your comments, all of your feedback that you're sharing today. We appreciate it. Everything is being recorded um, and part of our future um, study information. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. We have, um, okay, so a question came in from KJ. What are the exact locations of the eight sites? Um, so we can't share the exact locations only because these are private properties. So letters were sent to residents who lived within these specific areas. Um, in some situations, actually in all situations, it was multiple properties connected to each other that could form a potential OHV park. Um, so they all received letters, but um, in um, because of it, for privacy reasons, we certainly can't share their their exact addresses or their exact parcels. So, we we cannot share those exact sites. But um, we appreciate um, the interest in learning what those are. We can only share vicinities of where those properties would be located. All right, um, this is a good question that came through. This is from um, first initial D. Why does this process take so long? Fantastic question. I actually. Really enjoy this. Um, this could be a question for anybody from our development team, um, also resource management, um, if anybody wants to step in on that. I, I could I could chime in on that one. Okay. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's a great question. Why is it so long to, to, to process these type of projects? I mean, we have to start somewhere. Right. And um, some background information and, and sorry to, to, to bore everyone here. I know that our, our um, you know, everything comes down to, to planning 
right? And maybe some type of master plan in identifying these areas, feasibility studies, which guide these planning documents. So that's kind of where we are in the beginning. And like I said, why does it take long? It's because we are scratching the surface on this. I think this is the first time we're actually uh, using grant funding to conduct this type of level of study. So um, this is a first. It is going to take a while, but we're going to do it right. And uh, again, when it comes to uh, recreation, providing recreation for our San Diego County residences, and also ensuring that we preserve uh, open space and, and retain our land management practices, I mean, it is going to be a journey, uh, but we're going to do it right. And this is the first steps. So, you know, from, from here, from, from the feasibility study, there's a planning component. From a, a planning component, now is identifying sites and locations. After identifying sites and locations, the acquisition process in which are there willing selling uh, opportunities there. And then when purchasing the, the site, then um, you do the full detailed uh, environmental assessment. So, and it, it's a long process. So there's really no good news when it comes to duration of these separate projects, but there's a step-by-step a, a -step process. And it's, it's um, it, there's a reason for that. Right to make sure we have a good project and it's done right from the safety from um, from our residences and to the uh, environmental pr protection practices of, of what we do as a department as well. So, and uh, I don't know if other team members here wanted to add to that. Try to summarize that to the best I can. So I'm, I'm sure I missed some things there potentially. <laughs> no, that I mean that was great. I mean we've received a couple of questions about you know, potential greenhouse gas impacts, biological impacts, those are all of the type of things that we take really seriously in the environmental analysis for our projects, which is what takes us some time to, to go through that process. So thank you for mentioning those. All right, this is an easy question for me right here. Um, Darren's asking how many attendees are on this Zoom? Um, I can tell you right now, there are 78 participants on this Zoom right now, <laughs> so um, we'll also share that on our website, but hey, that's a good question. You're right, that information is not visible to the public, um, but there are 78 people currently on this Zoom, and then when the, I believe when the meeting recording is posted online, that, that those details are also visible to the public. Okay, um, Kemi is asking, I'm from Rantita, is it possible for locations that were previously reviewed to be reevaluated in the tier two map? Good question. Emmett, is that possible? I can answer that. Um, there's always a possibility unless it falls within the preserve areas, the tribal land areas, the, the areas that were we considered no build or, or no potential at all for these type of facilities where it's not compatible. Right. You have these active type of high intense uses and it's just not compatible with these other land uses. Then we, uh, per what Dick mentioned earlier in the presentation, have scored that accordingly, it being not compatible. If there's areas we may have missed, right? Okay. Um, areas in which you might have more information that we don't have, we'd be happy to take a look and, and reassess and uh, to see if we did miss something. Because again, we're, we're all human. And, you know, with computer models, that's what they are, computer models. So any help uh, we, we can uh, obtain at this point in the process is appreciated. So, um, yes, there's a possibility to reevaluate uh, accordingly and as needed. All right. Uh, Taylor, can we pull back up that tier two map? Just we had a question about OHV locations in North County. So I just wanted to see what was up there. I don't know if we have any specifically in that area, I guess in the North County mountain region potentially, um, but the preference was to potentially have a an OHV park in North County. So noted, um, thank you, Rose Sharon or Sharon Rose, we, we've got your comment there. We'll make sure that that's also logged with the rest of um, the feedback that we got today. Thank you again for posting that in our Q&A pane so it's part of our official feedback. All right, um, John's asking if the sites that we're looking at are only privately owned lands, why are we not looking at existing county properties or county parks? Another fantastic question. It may have to do with available acreage. It might have to do with geography, but I will give this one over to our development team. And I, I don't know, RMD might also want to step in and provide feedback on this too. Sure. Um, I, I could jump in first, if you don't mind. Uh, so with, with this and the direction we received from um, 
you know, from the board and executive management, we wanted to, the County of San Diego Parks Department wanted to find a site in which we'll be maintaining, that we'll be operating so we can fit the needs and, um, and wants from our county residences. So that was our goal and objective, to find private property to, to house this type of facility in the unincorporated area in which we'll be maintaining and, and operating solely. So that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. Now, is that going to happen at the end of this study? We don't know. Um, that's why we're going through this process. But that those are our efforts and trying to find a site that works in which we'll be able to maintain and, and operate ourselves as um, as DPR or Department of Parks and Rec. So that, that's our lens right now and what we're looking at. And again, um, yeah, that, that, that's our approach. Uh, we're not looking into um, having any joint use uh, type of facilities unless we, we, you know, again, if there is no opportunities at all, this feasibility study concludes that there is no sites, whether we may have to, you know, pivot and see what other opportunities there are. So I'm not ruling that out. That could be a possibility, but our efforts right now are put into looking for private properties for, uh, for this type of activity. And I can hand over to, to Crystal. Oh, sure. Thank you, Amit. And so related to Otay Valley Regional Park specifically, a, a couple of factors there. One is that a lot of the land that we own in OVRP is conserved land. So it's part of our multiple species conservation program. And so this type of activity wouldn't be compatible in a lot of those properties that we own. And, and the other piece of that is that we do own some land for active recreation and that's already been identified for some projects that we have in a conceptual kind of master plan for OVRP. So, you know, kind of in addition to that as well, they're really not large enough for this type of thing. We don't have hundreds and hundreds of acres in that area the way that we're looking for for this analysis. So a couple factors there. That actually leads into my next question here that comes from Bill. If smaller sites are identified that might restrict overall end user participation, can or will more than one site be considered for future potential OHV development? I, I could answer that. Um, I would say why not, right? Those are the type of comments we need to obtain. And, and sorry for being the continued you know, open book on this, but that's where we are. And that's what I'm doing. Um, like I said, if um, if it so happens we can't find those contiguous 300 acres, then yes, we're going to have to pivot, find a smaller site. And with the smaller site, if that's what's needed to meet the recreational needs of our San Diego residences, and it and it fits the the bill of 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 uh, ensuring that we maintain and preserve um, you know open space and have good land management, then then yeah, there's opportunities for multiple smaller sites. Yeah, why not, right? I think um, it's just the, the possibilities right now is um, is open and, and this is the moment where we're um, obtaining uh, feedback. So yeah, that's a great comment. I think that's something we should look into and consider if there, there is opportunity for that. All right. And then, um, well, again, while I have you here, what is the criteria now, ne kind of next steps for narrowing down the eight proposed sites for next tier of review? Um, is, is land acquisition that number one thing and then everything else falls in place or, or what's next steps? Yeah, the I think the, when I think, I, I know that the willing selling letters that were sent out and, and getting feedback from those letters it is a huge um, variable, if you will, of whether or not uh, people would be willing or not. So yes, that that's a huge, um, I would say, uh, milestone in this process, which we're still, and I am still uh, receiving responses on. But um, when we do complete the final tier two sites, you know, that will involve, you know, additional desktop review from cultural and biological resource assessment, um, economic assessment as well, um, accessibility and, and, and location. Um, we'll be looking at other case studies that we've we've done in, in within the state as well to assist us and additional feedback from the public and 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 roundtable. So, um, but but we don't want to go into that now. Again, the, the these are draft at this point. Willing selling letters are out, and that again, there's opportunities like the feedback we've been getting. I mean, if there's potential sites that we have missed, please email me and let me know. And the team can take a look at that. If some of these sites we know is is a no-go and, and it's a potential for huge environmental concerns and it's just that we missed it, then yeah, we'll remove it. 
right? It, it is all tribal. It is all preserved. And we miss that in our part and, and we'll move on from that. So yeah, um, that, that's kind of uh, where we are at this, at this point. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we do have some comments here in the chat. Um, we have from Rochelle. Um, Rochelle was um, saying thank you for your attempt at full transparency um, by sending out those letters to willing sellers. Um, there are some suggestions on um, maybe updating the wording in those letters. So we can take a look at that as we send out future communications. Thank you um, for your suggestions there. Um, it was to clarify that um, when we're looking at potential sellers to say what type of park we're looking at, at uh, potentially building. So Awesome feedback, thank you. Um, you know what, that's not always the, the way that we word stuff, but it doesn't mean it shouldn't be. So we appreciate that feedback and we'll definitely look into including that in future communications. Um, all right, so uh, we have quite a few questions here on how people can register for future emails and how they can get future information about this park project. So um, Taylor, if you can go back to the slide that has Emmett's contact information, I want, I just want to have that up on the screen so people can jot down Emmett's contact info. Um, and then, um, so one way is to um, jot down Emmett's info so he can add you to his distribution list. He's got an email master list. Um, he also has just a general contact list of all of the different agencies that exist in these areas. Uh, for some, he's made direct contact, but not all of them just yet. So uh, there were some questions in here about, have you talked to this person yet? Um, in some cases, yes. In some cases, probably not yet. So just know that um, even if he hasn't yet, it doesn't mean they're not on his radar. <laughs> uh, but thank you if you've provided contact information for them. Adding them to the chat here has been wonderful. We'll make sure that they're recorded. And if they're not on our list, they will be added to the list in the future. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, in addition to um, contacting Emmett and being added to his distribution list, our website is a great place to go for information. We have a web page dedicated to all things OHV, and we're in the process of building a customer engagement portal. This is a interactive customer site where you can go in, you can ask questions, provide feedback, answer surveys, access videos. Um, get into interactive maps. We can look at all these different tiers and pull things apart by layers. So it's a really cool site. Uh, we're in the process of building it right now. It's part of some new um, cool tech functionality that's available to us as county employees. So um, we we're able to kind of nerd out on that a little bit to, to build something fun for you to play with. But we're hoping that it, it provides a, a clearer picture of what this um, study is all about. So that should be going live in the next couple of weeks, and we'll share that on our website, sdparks.org. Uh, so um, contact Emmett or you know visit our website, and that will be a great place to get future info. All right, let's see here. Um, trying to see, we've got a lot of similar questions in here. Uh, let's see here. Another question about how many people called in. Currently, we have 73 people on the call. All right. Gunner is asking if we have any specific front runners for locations. I imagine it's too early to tell. Am Emmett, do you want to answer that question? Uh, that's correct. It's too early to tell. So no no front runners. <laughs> uh, well, again, I, I know that we're narrowing. Right. And then, and what you see in the, the figure illustration is what we have. But that mm -hmm. is subject to change you know, based on additional feedback I get from, from you all and um, additional assessment. But um, but we'll definitely keep everyone apprised to to the process of, in, in this review. Awesome, thank you. And then Gunnar wanted to add that um, Gunnar personally feels that an OHV area in the Northern portion of the county is a great opportunity as there's Coral Canyon OHV and the McCain Valley off the I-8 and Ocotillo Wells in Eastern San Diego County. So great comments. Yes, we've got quite a few in the far stretches of the county, not much in central areas or, or in North County, to your point. All right, Ed, thank you. The San Diego County Fish and Wildlife Commission knows about this project. Fantastic. All right, Don is asking, where, where is the budget for planning, acquisition, and development? So funding for a potential park OHV Park. Um, right now, we are still, again, just in the exploratory study. That will determine whether or not we need funding for a park. But um, should it come to that, um, Emmett, I'll let you answer that question about funding for a development. 
Yeah, it, uh, my response is going to be the same as what Jessica just said. Um, we, we don't have funding. Um, you know, we were directed by our board to apply for a grant to prepare the study, and that's where we are. So, yes, we have no funding, but what the team will be doing is continue, continuing to see opportunities, you know, to work with the state, obtain additional grant funding to further um, this, this effort. So that, that's kind of where we are. But there is no current funding at this point when it comes to acquisition. What we envision is, you know, additional efforts working with the state and opportunities to, to get additional grant funding to uh, try to continue this process. And I have a, a combo question here by two separate people. But if a park were to be established, would we remove existing trails or would we incorporate trails into that park? Meaning could a fire road be incorporated into the property and could horse trails that exist currently on land be removed to make way for that property? That, that is a, a technical design level question in which um, we're not, I, I feel like we're not there yet. So <laughs> again, very technical. Um, when it comes to removal of trails, it really depends on the property. Is there an existing easement? Vacation easement is a board um, driven action. So again, it, it is kind of speculative in a way too, but no, the, the comment is appreciated. And that's something that will be considered once sites are actually identified. So um, no, thank you for that comment. And that's something that we will be thinking about if uh, a site presents itself with those particular um, features and situations. All right, thank you. Yeah, I guess it kind of just goes to it. Everything is feasible, um, should a feasible location be presented. Um, but again, it's it's too soon to tell, right? So we, we appreciate all of these great questions that are coming through. Um, we have a question in here about willing to sell letters. So um, there's an individual, Lisa, um, saying that um, she knows several people who did receive letters, um, but Lawson Valley is not highlighted in the eight areas that were presented um, in tonight's meeting. So, uh, but Eastern Humul is. So she's wondering if more letters are going to be sent out or if all of the letters for this current phase have already been sent to residents who would be potentially um, receiving those letters. Yeah, we, um, yeah, those letters were sent out based on, uh, those general areas on the, the tier two draft map. Um, but as far as a possibility of sending additional, yes, there's there's a possibility for that um, after this meeting and uh, you know assessing the comments and feedback we'll receive after this meeting as well and meeting internally with staff. I feel that um, as we go through um, the, the feedback we get, um, there, there will be poten potential opportunities, right? For sites that we, we um, may have missed. So uh, there's a possibility don't want to rule that out where um, we're not going to shut the door and sending out those letters yet. Um, right now it's a, <laughs> sorry, cliche, it's an open book, but, uh, but yeah, there is opportunities for, for selling, um, for sending out more letters if the, if opportunity presents itself. Okay, um, question here. Will we be posting the tier two map to the website so we can view the sites? Yes, 100%. Following this meeting, um, we're gonna just update the deck here, make sure we've got all of the information you need with the appropriate links on this deck. Um, we will be posting it to our website so you can access it and it does include the tier two map with those layers that we discussed. So um, absolutely the information will be there. If you have any extra questions, of course you can contact Emmett and he can answer those for you. Um, we have uh, one of the questions that came through is from Darcy saying that we did reference a potential third public meeting contingent upon the number of sites that are determined. Um, Darcy's asking, how does the number of sites identified determine the public meeting moving forward? Really good question. Emmett, how would that determine public meeting number three? Good question. Um, you know, staff would have to assess uh, and, and review based on the number provided. There's no fine line number. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. When we first scoped this project in a perfect world, it looked like it was going to be 16 sites down to eight sites down to two sites. I mean, things change, and and that's and it's it's constantly evolving as far as information we're getting, and uh, just trying to make sure that we're able to, um, you know, do this right 
if you will. So um, as far as uh, opportunities for information, we will be updating the website. I encourage you, if you're not on the mailing list, just to email me, say, put me on the list, and we'll provide updated information on our website consistently. And then if, um, if a public meeting, we feel that there's added value to that to assist with this process, then we'll, we'll provide that but we'll definitely be consistent with the website and information. So um, yeah, well, that, that's something that we will, we will consider as we continue to get the willing selling letters coming in and the feedback we receive from you all. Great. Taylor, can we take a look again at that um, pro the um, timeline slide that we had up there? We have a question here about from Josh, just as, you know, are there any deadlines that need to be met in order for a project to continue? Just kind of like, where are we right now in that process and what are, What's that timetable look like? So if there were potentially a public meeting number three, where would that fit? Oh, um, where would it fit? Um, I would say, you know, it, it, it'd it be difficult to, to call out, but following the schedule, I, I think it falls in line here. Um, once we've reduced and finalized the tier two sites, again, it's draft eight. That's most likely going to be reduced further and narrowed down. Um, yeah, I see the possibility of having some type of public meeting or meeting with the roundtable group and or um, of definitely having updates to to the website. And um looks like fall winter 2024, uh, 2024 winter, sorry, 2024, 2025 winter is what I meant. So yeah, there's a possibility for, for, for next year, uh, contingent on the information we receive and the further assessment um, that we conduct on these sites. All right. Question about that map again. If an area does not have a star, is it no longer being considered? At this point, I'm going to say yes, because our focus is on these starred areas and relying on, on the public to letting us know if there is sites you'd like us to, to entertain and or additionally research. Okay. And then digging deep into that data, we might want to bring in... Um, Let's see here. We had our, one of our consultants who was looking at that first map um, who kind of explained all of the layers. Um, Dick, I think um, maybe you can answer this question. Will the GIS data that was used to create these maps be made available? And among other things, um, was mentioned to get the 1000 score. Um, is the full list going to be made available? So all of those different data points, are we providing that in addition to that, that slide? Uh, all, well, uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly, all of the data that we used is publicly available information. And so anyone you know, who wanted to get that um, has access to it. I would have to defer to, to Emmett on uh, county leadership on um, yeah, how much of that kind of in progress mapping products that we would want to make uh, available on the website. Emmett, yeah, on that? absolutely. Um, I I feel that what and, and to answer the question, once once the the feasibility study is is complete mm -hmm. and has been finalized, all that information will be disclosed in in, in the report, and that'll be shared. Um, at, at this point, well, we we will not be providing any specifics, as right now we're still obtaining information and details, and things are subject to adjusting. Like what I mentioned, and how the figure illustration shows draft, it is draft um, at this point. It's not final that tier two site. So please let us know um, and and provide us additional information. Staff is going to continue to roll up our sleeves. And, and to assess these and to to listen to see if there's any other potential sites um, or um, confirming sites that are going to be removed, right? I mean that that that's where we are. So nothing specific. However, in completion of the report, the you know the technical details would be provided. And okay. yep, and uh, yeah, I think that that um... yeah, just with a disclaimer that we're just going to Emmett, I just want to give you a time yeah. check. I know you're yep. rolling through the questions and um, we're heading to 7.15 and some people who are involved in the meeting um, may need to, to depart to other things for this evening. So um, Jessica, how is it looking? Do you still have a lot of questions left? We, um, we still have over 20 open questions, but okay. some of them are related. So I'm going to try to get through as many of these as we can. Okay, let's keep going then. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay. 
So let's see here. Anything else major? Um, okay, a lot of questions about how to stay involved. So contact Emma. That's a great way to do it. Um, a lot of questions about um, future funding. Same situation. Um, once and if we determine a, a site is feasible, uh, funding, looking into funding sources would be the next step. Um, let's see here. Why is tribal land being excluded? Um, the Palo, um, Barona, um, and other tribes um, have potential opportunities. That's a question that's coming in from Asher. So why are we excluding tribal lands? Uh, I, I can answer that. I, I, the direction we got was to find property in the unincorporated uh, in which the the parks department, County San Diego Parks Department can operate and maintain, in which we'll be able to, uh, you know, provide, you know, any detailed needs from our OHV users and uh, and also at the same time our environmental enthusiasts. So um, we'll have, in a sense, you know, the the control to make it a, a county park within our county park system. And and that will, that's where our efforts are being put at at this point. Now, to rule that out, future joint use facility possibilities, I want to say that there is that po the potential. I mean, again, if, if this feasibility results in a conclusion saying that you may want to consider that, then that's something that uh, we'll, we'll definitely consider and, and pivot and, and make the changes accordingly. And that's why we're going through this process. I mean, we have to go through our due diligence first to see if we can cite this within private property unincorporated so we can maintain it. And, um, and, and then we can move on from there to see what other options are if that's not considered feasible. Great, thank you. Um, and again, I know Kai had a question here about if the suitable areas are small, would we consider multiple uses, uh, potentially a different range of uses for each area? Yes, absolutely. That's always what we look at for recreation opportunities in county parks. Um, sometimes we can't do exactly what we want in a certain space, so we diversify and we bring as much as we possibly can into the space that is available. Right now we are exploring OHV. So that's our primary purpose. Um, but again, we have a lot of other recreational opportunities throughout San Diego County to make sure that we're providing options for, for people of all um, ages and interests and abilities. So um, let me see if there's anything else that stands out here. I know um, there was a question here about zooming in on the map. Um, this is coming in from Albert. So we shared a map that showed um, the base using the aerial photography. So I don't know if we can pull that one back up. Um, it has topographic lines. So I don't know if this map we can zoom in on or maybe we can provide the map separately. Um, but I think the concern was, can we, um, it'd be helpful to kind of look at an area and see how it could be affected by environmental factors such as sound and dust. And if the terrain would be interesting to OHV users, which is, is a great um, um, a great comment there. So also looking at natural water sources and all of these things would of course be environmental factors we take into consideration. So um, I think with these maps, we could make them available separately if there's enough demand. Um, we may not post them on our website. Um, we can definitely talk about that offline if there's enough interest from the group. That's something we could consider. Otherwise, I think that's something that Emmett could provide directly to you if you sent him an email. Um, and then Emmett, we had a question in the chat also. If somebody sends you a message, do you have any preference on subject line? Oh, huh. it's a good Good question. I would say uh, OHV um, OHV uh, response to public meeting or something to that effect. So only second categorize that appropriately in the subject line would be OHV public meeting or or second public meeting. Anything in that fashion would assist me in in um, making sure I can categorize and, and triage my emails appropriately. So that'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, a lot of questions here about very specific locations. These are all fantastic. Um, we will not be able to get through all of them. However, they are all being logged and we will respond to every single one of them. We are gonna have a separate Q&A document that's gonna address each one of these. So you'll be able to see all of the responses to these questions. Um, let's see here. There's a little concern about um, a building, just the general being able to build a park as large as an OHV park um, when it's difficult to build something as small as a ball field. 
understood. Sometimes we, we face some complications building parks in specific areas of San Diego. Uh, so obviously this is why things take so long. Um, we're doing our due, due diligence to make sure that all of the um, players are part of the process from start to finish. Um, but thank you all for your comments and your feedback. This is wonderful. The engagement has been so fantastic. We received dozens and dozens of questions uh, throughout this meeting tonight. So um, please keep those coming. I'm hoping we addressed pretty much all of the, the high level topics that have come through. Again, we see some very specific street names in here that we'll be able to comment on specifically. Outside of that, I'm hoping I addressed all of your comments and concerns and questions. Um, I guess we can we can um, end this with uh, maybe one last time pulling up that contact information for Emmett and our web address so people can jot that down. Anything we didn't cover, again, visit our website, contact Emmett, we'll get you the information you need. As soon as our engagement portal is live, we'll send you the link to that as well. And we love your feedback. This is a work in progress, but it's built for you. So we want to make sure it's user friendly. If there's anything missing, tell us what it is. We can um, absolutely customize it. So it's something that you actually want to come and visit um, and we'll add in any resources that would make it more beneficial to you and your learning process. Jessica, Emmett, thank you. You two were awesome going through the questions and there literally were dozens and dozens of questions. And like you said, um, the team will provide written responses and especially with those questions um, where there's more specific information about about specific sites. Um, again, the contact information, the website's on the screen right now. I know like for me, it's really easy. I just get my phone out and I just click a photo. That's one of the ways um, I keep track of information like this. So I wanna welcome all of you to do that. And the, um, the Engage portal that Jessica's talking about, it's awesome. And it's um, I've seen it on other projects, so check it out. And uh, the County of San Diego is really showing leadership in thinking and implementing effective ways for people to, to stay involved. That's awesome. Um, so we're gonna wrap up. And Emmett, it's you're the project managers. And I know you'll wanna close us out with some um, with a couple of words. Yeah, I just wanna provide a great appreciation for all. Uh, I know it's late, 7.30, but your involvement, taking, you know, time, volunteer time to come in and listen to this and participate, provide feedback is helpful to us. So again, we, the county and the staff here encourage all of you to provide us any information you might have to help us do our job better. So again, we appreciate any type of feedback and details, and we'll continue to communicate our process and thread this process with you all as we go through this journey together. So thank you again for, um, allowing us to have your evening. And um, again, stay tuned as we'll be updating the website with some additional follow-up information. So um, if you're interested, again, just email me, say you want to be in the mailing list and I'll include you. So thank you all uh, to to all who are able to make it tonight and to staff as well and, and to the presentation team. Thank you.